this is a repeat of a presentation that was given at Phosphor G UK in Southampton in November 2022. There was a technological issue on the day which meant that the recording wasn't completed. The presentation titled A Safe Route Using PG Routing and QGIS. This is a novel example of using both PG routing and QGIS to build an effective solution that's being used within a business process within a local authority today. So we have a presentation timeline. Um, I want to kick off by just talking a little bit about what this project is and how relevant it is to Phosphor G. Then I'm going to give you a little bit of a background to the project in the context of the, the business environment it sits. Data is key to what we're doing here, so I want to talk a, a bit about data. And then give a demonstration um, and an indication of how the, the solution was designed. So I wanted to, to bring this project to, to, to the attention of the Phosphor G community today because it demonstrates tools in the spatial open source stack brought together in a novel way to produce a custom business solution. It's using both QGIS as an easily configurable intuitive interface and then the power of Postgres PostGIS functions to produce dynamic layers and manage data maintenance. And then importantly, the extension PG routing as a flexible and configurable spatial networking tool. So some background to the project. Uh, I was working for a local authority, which is uh, Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole Council or BCP Council. And they have a duty to provide transport to school for certain children in special circumstances. As well as other factors to be eligible, a child needs to live beyond a two or three mile safe walking distance to their school entrance. When a request is made, uh, an officer needs to be able to calculate the eligibility of this child and provide a map as evidence of the decision that has been made. So there was a pre-existing system that did this job. It used map info, but it kept breaking and the data was was a bit, a bit old. There was areas of network that um, didn't exist where there was new 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 bills, etc. So as well as building a solution to, uh, to, to be able to calculate the routes, uh, we also needed to look at how we maintain the data as well, and I'll come on to that. PG routing was already in use by the GIS team in a small way, so it was decided to investigate if we could provide an easy to use solution uh, for staff. Bearing in mind that PG routing essentially is just a library of functions. So it was going to take some thought to turn it into something that would be easy for our customer to use. So as a result of this project, this solution is now being used in production to make decisions about children's transport needs. So next I'm going to look at data and the most important part of that is the walking route network data. The network used by the council follows actual walking routes, including pavements, paths and road cross points. Uh, this is something that's written into council policy uh, and uh, differs from uh, similar applications that often use uh, road centre lines as a guide for as a walking route. Uh, this is a council owned data set um, and it needs to, needs to be updated. So I should mention at this point at the time um, of this project, um, the BCP Council was formed um, with a merger of Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole councils and this uh, 
use of the path network was only in use in Bournemouth. Um, but we wanted to be able to use it for the whole of the um, the BCP area. Uh, so as part of the project, we also needed to update the um, the path network, not only to correct any changes, but also to include the areas of Paul and Christchurch. Um, so this was um, a, a bigger task. I don't want to go into too much detail of how we, how we did this in this presentation. Uh, but needless to say, we made use of uh, pavement features in Master Map, um, and we are able to uh, take the polygon uh, area feature um, and produce some lines from it using a postgis function called straight skeleton. There was then a fair amount of work that followed that on, um, where we had to join in paths, we had to bring in crossing points and we had to join everything up in, into a network. Uh, so it was a fair, fairly manual process um, that followed. Um, but having created the network, we will then be able to uh, process it using the PGR create topology function to build a topology network uh, for within the PG routing tool sets. So there are other data sets uh, that were key to this work, um, including addresses. For this, we used the local land property gazetteer that was managed by the council, uh, a schools data set that uh, was held within the council as well. Um, and further to this, we also wanted to create some more specific points for school entrances. Um, schools tend to be quite large areas. Um, and just going to a nearest point on the network is not particularly useful. Um, and we wanted to be precise enough to actually get the walking distance to where the um, to where you would actually walk into, into the school. And that was to be written into the policy. So this data set didn't already exist, but it was uh, different resources were used to compile it. Um, and then each um, point which represented a, a entrance um, was then uh, related to the network. OK, right, so. So I'd like to proceed with a demonstration here. OK, so this is QGIS. Uh, the first thing to note is that the we've simplified the tools that are available using the interface customization. The, the people using this tool, they're not GIS people. They only need to use QGIS for this one task. So we've stripped out most of the tools and left them with the tools that we felt that would be useful to do their job. Just to keep things clean and simple as possible. Uh, we've then used a plugin, it's called the Discovery plugin. Uh, you may well have used it yourselves. Um, this uh, enables you to uh, uh, plug it. You this you plug into a any any data set. Um, here we plugged into the address database, um, and you can use it as a gazetteer to uh, find um, find those records on the map. So, for example, here we type in the name of the address, um, and we're able to here we type in the name address, and we're able to find it, select it and go to it on the map. And here you can see the, the address location. And um, if I just now switch off the base map, you will see the uh, the network, the path network that we've created. Uh, this is actually made up of two layers. Uh, there's a, a, a line layer um, and there's a point layer. So the points uh, represent the beginning and the ends of each uh, line segment of the network. One thing you'll note, also note here is that the lines are actually quite short. And one thing we had to do is that uh, to be able to use PG routing, you, you can only join the network at a node or at one of these points at an end of a line. Uh, and what we found is when we first processed the network, we found that the, the way the starting point on the network was too far away from an address um, to be useful. Uh, so what we had to do is we had to create a, 
uh, lots of splits in the network to create new, uh, let's say, start nodes um, onto the network for every single address. Uh, so I, I, we did some kind of process to find the nearest point on the line or point on the network to uh, each of the address and, and, and did a split using some, some post just functions. If you recall, we're not just interested in any route, we're only interested in safe routes. So routes can be classified safe or unsafe. Uh, they're depicted on this map uh, with the safe routes being in green and you can see an unsafe uh, route in red. Um, it's very easy for the operatives to just change the classification of this network if they decide that a, a section of network is deemed to be unsafe. So before I go any further, um, I would like to take this opportunity to have a look at some of the, the layers that we have available to us within the layer list. Um, the first layer I have up here is called search. Search has got this little pink spot. Uh, this layer is uh, essentially an empty layer, but it gives us an opportunity to define a point uh, and bring together information that we want to be able to use within the PG routing. So I'll come into that a little bit more detail, but this is our starting point. Uh, the second layer is called root and the root is loaded into this layer once it's been created. OK, we then have addresses. We have schools, we have the school gates. Uh, and then at the bottom here, you can see we've got these two layers. We've got the path network nodes uh, and the, the path network. Next, I'd like to look at the path network a little bit more and the, the attribution that we have here. Um, and there's some key fields. Uh, the first is whether a route is safe or not, and that's defined by this column. Uh, and then we have four other columns that are used by the PG routing. Um, the first two is the source node and the target node. Nodes are those points um, on the map. Each intersection has a node, and this has an ID. And within the network here, we're able to define the start and the endpoint for each line section. So you've got start node and target node, the start and the beginning of each line section. We also then have a cost length and a reverse cost length. This is just defined by the length of a section of route within meters. In terms of uh, the cost of a route, because we're only interested in the distance, uh, that we're walking and there's nothing like journey times or anything like that and um, the cost length is is all that we need uh, and then the reverse con cost is and the reverse cost length is the same okay uh, right well let's uh, go through and we should do a route calculation so i mentioned before we have this search layer and the first thing we need to do is create a point within the search layer and we create the point on or near the uh, root network at the closest point to the address we're interested in. So if you go back to the beginning, we searched 101 Harewood, this is the address. We found the closest intersection on the network um, and we create the point within this layer. And um, key to this is then we save it So if we have a look at the uh, feature attributes for this feature, uh, you will see the act of saving it has taken the ID of that start point. Uh, this is there's a there's a trigger that's gone on the database to populate this. OK, um, so just. So to look at this conceptually, um, this is our search table. Um, at this point, we take that start node ID. We also need to populate other information, including the start address um, and the school. 
Um, and what we're going to do is by taking that information, we're able to um, join it to the schools table um, and then the schools gates table. And we're able to extract the finish node ID from the schools gates table, if that makes sense. Uh, so let's have a look. We select the address as well. Um, and then we can select the school. Uh, here I have like to use the a pick list with a completer. This is very good if you have a, a long list uh, um, within a pick list. If you use the completer, as I start typing, you will see all, all the uh, records that match um, the character pattern um, and you're then able to uh, select the, the correct school from the list. OK, well, we then press OK. And the next thing that happens, it takes this information. Um, principally, the start node we've got from clicking um, on the network. The finish node, which is attached to the school gates, which is all linked through the schools table. It fires a database trigger and passes all that information through to the PGR Dijkstra function. This is the PG routing function that's going to use the PG routing topological network, which is also only filtered on just the safe routes. Uh, and it's going to calculate the route, the shortest route, from the start point to the end point. Let's have a look at that back in QGIS. And you can see that a route has been created on the map here from the point where we started from going off to the right. And it's also included the distance of that route. We're able to look at the extent of that route. We put the base mapping back on as well. So you can see this is the route that takes us to the school. Have a little, we'll have a closer look at the school. Now, what you'll see, this is the school here, St James's Church of England Primary School. And, and it has uh, three entrances or three gateways into the school. Uh, you'll see it A, B and C. And what's happened here, the, uh, the route that's being displayed is the route to the closest gate. And that's what we're interested in. So it's gone to gate A because it's found that this is the closest gate as a way into the school. So what is actually happening if we go back to our diagram here? To determine the shortest route to the closest gate, we've we've had to um, run this PGR Dijkstra function three times for the three gates. And then we're able to select the, the shortest route uh, from those three, and that's the one that's displayed in the results. So as I mentioned, evidence is important and um, for that we, we can create a, a map. Using the layout manager. And key to this is using the Atlas on the layout manager, which enables us to bring through some attributes which were associated with the route uh, and populate that onto the map. So you can see this is route from A to B. And then we can also pop the distance in here as well from, from the attributes. So that's the solution. There are a couple more things to mention though. Uh, the, the first is that this is a multi-user operation. The solution is designed to be used by multiple users at once. Key to this is that all users have their own database login. Then, in PostGIS, features in search points and the routes tables created as part of this process um, are stamped with the current user, i.e. the user that's logged into that database. So we can associate everything that's created to a particular user. Then in QGIS, we then filter all these layers based on the current user as well. So 
you will only see the features that relate to your user. Users will only see data they created, even though every other user is operating using the same project with the same layers. I could also mention here that when you have completed one route and then you go on to create a new one, uh, the, uh, the the information from the previous one is is archived. The, I think the route, the previous information, the the, the route is archived as a record, um, and then the point is deleted. Uh, so you, there's only ever one point within that layer. So the other aspect of this work was managing the network. Um, the council maintains the path network um, and it's a regular task to um, add and change paths. Uh, one issue with this is this is a fairly dynamic beast, this network, uh, that if we were to rebuild the topology using the PGR create topology function within PG routing, uh, this can take quite a long time to run. And then every time you run it, all those nodes that uh, are created where the ID numbers are reset. And bearing in mind that we've uh, got um, other features like the, the school entrances, etc., referencing those um, those nodes, um, this 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 creates a, a bit of a problem. So our solution to this was to build a series of triggers and functions in a database, so that net, the network topology is maintained as the user edits the network. So back in QGIS, here I've got the same network layer. The stars have been changed just to make them stand out a little bit here. Um, but say, for example, you wanted to just split the network. Uh, we could use the split tool and create a split. And what you'll see here is that the, the a new point has been created um, within the path network nodes layer automatically as we created the split. Um, we can also then extend, and you see the same thing is happening here. The the nodes layer is being maintained, but the other thing that's happening within the but then the other thing that's happening within the path network, Claire, if we look at the, the attribution here, is that for every section of the uh, the network that we recreate, it's populating the um, source node, the target node. Indeed, those nodes have to be created with ID numbers before they're populated here. Um, and then also the cost length and the reverse cost length. So this all happens um, as you work on the network um, and therefore there's no reason to uh, rerun the create topology uh, function. So just some final thoughts here. Um, I've demonstrated a technique of interacting with data stored in PostGIS through QGIS using database triggers uh, and functions. Uh, a database kit is key in calling a trigger function. A new feature or an update needs to be saved to make the database trigger happen. I was thinking of building, I was thinking to build a new add feature tool in Python that didn't require the manual save. So every time you created a feature, the save is automatic um, and this would remove a step in the process. This is a really simple use of PG routing. It uses just one function and a whole library of functions. So if you're thinking this is this is what PG routing is all about, there's a lot more to it. So in this demonstration, while all the magic happens within PostGIS and PG routing, don't underestimate the importance of QGIS to being able to produce a simple application here. Um, the ability to configure it make it simple to use configure forms with pick lists it's really vital to be able to produce a tool like this we could have used the web uh, to, to build such a solution but q just really makes it quite simple for anyone to pick up and build something like this 
thank you very much uh, for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. My details are on the screen.